problem or hack code. In this video, we're going to dive into fundamental and tricky problem data structures with a single link list. Whether you're preparing for the coding interview or sharpening your algorithm skills, mastering the link list tools is a must. We'll explore both iterative and regressive approaches, ensuring you got the tools to tackle the challenge. Let's dive in. So here, given the head of a single link list, there was a list and written the reverse list. So here, uh, example one, the given is like the initial uh, head was at one and the tail was at five. After reversing the link list, we get like this. The tail is now the new head. The head is now the tail. So that's how like the this point five points to four and then four points to three, three points to two, one, two points to one. So here we can see just like uh, input and output which they gave. Uh, and here also, uh, initially head was one and tail was two. Now, now that we reversed it, we get the new head as two and the tail is one. When they give the empty list, we just return the empty list. This is a base case. So here the constraints are number of nodes in the list is in the increase range of zero to 5,000. And the node value rise in the increase range of minus 5,000 to 5,000. So follow up is like a linked list can be reversed either iteratively or recursively. Could you implement both? Yes, we're gonna implement both approach using iteration so basically you would have got the idea right a linked list is a linear collection of elements where each element points to the next element and reversing a linked list means changing the direction of these pointers so that the head becomes the tail and vice versa so here the iterative method mainly consists of three pointers to reverse the linked list direction without losing any data so the algorithm starts like this we first initialize the three pointers previous current and next node uh, so previous is to uh, point to the previous node and current is for just the node which we are processing and the next node is to hold reference to the next node. So we just traverse the list for each node. We point it's next to the previous point, previous node and update the previous to the current and move current to the next node. So repeat this until the end of the list. When the current reaches the none, the previous will be at the new, new head of the reverse list. So let's look into the code. So here, this is the link, list node definition which they gave us. Uh, this consists of value on the next, uh, this holds the pointer to the next thing. This is the value of the list node. Uh, so here, uh, as we discussed, we have the three variables here, previous, current and next node. So previous is for holding reference to the previous node. So first, like we have previous is initialized to none. This is because like we have to uh, make the new, uh, like head to point to the previous one, which is none, right? So we just start with that. So while current, current means like uh, we just, which current is initialized with head. So we iterate until current becomes none. Next node, we're just having the reference to the current dot next. That is like, we, this is just like make before break, right? So here, as we see here, uh, the given list is like one, two, three, four. Let's take an example of one, two, three, four. And uh, the fourth point is the none. So fourth is the tail here. And one is the head here. So here, when we take uh, first one and then this is the our current node. So we want it to point it to what uh, none, right? Because we want to reverse this. And then in doing that process, if we uh, make this directly point to none, we lose tra track of all these nodes. That's why we just hold the reference to the next node before we breaking this node. So that's what we're doing now here. So next node is called current dot next and current dot next is called to previous. So we just made this uh, one to point to the none, right? because previous is none here. And then we just here preparing for the next iteration. For the next iteration, what is the previous node? The current node. And then the current node would be pointing the next node because we need to increment the pointer to the next node, right? Else we can't process this. So that's it, simple. And then we are retaining the previous here. So at the end of the loop, previous would be what? Our this new, our new head. So here, the time complexity is O of n since we are iterating through all the nodes of the given linked list and the space complexity is O of 1 since we are just using the variables and it's not varying with the uh, input. So it's just like uh, only constant space. So it's O of 1. So we are here. So we are given the linked list of 1, 2, 3, 4 and here the 1 is the head and 4 is the tail and we need to reverse it. After reversing it, this would become like this 4, 3, 2, 1. So 4 is a new head and 1 is a new tail. So here. So we just start with the three variables and previous, current and next node, wherein previous holds def uh, reference to none uh, and then uh, current holds the current node which is one and the next holds nef reference to the next node. So in an iteration two, the previous would become the one because we said uh, like previous is equal to current right as we see in the code. So here and the current would becomes to the current processing node which is two and the next node is three. So here in this step, we are making uh, two to point to one. Here we are making one to point to none. 
so in the iteration 3 similarly we make 3 to point 2 and iteration 4 we similarly make 4 to point 3 and then when it comes to iteration 5 we see that the current is not none and then we just stop it and then we just return the previous which is 4 and then the reverse link list would be 4 3 2 1 and points 2 and 1 points to none so, and then, so approach 2 so approach 2 is using recursion so the recursive method breaks the list down and reversing it step by step and stitching it back together so the algorithm starts like this so we start with the base condition so if head is none or head dot next is none then we return the head and the next is recursive call assume that rest of the list is already reversed here so here and the third step we have is rearrange the pointers so we set the head dot next dot next to head we set head dot next to none to break the original link this is to avoid the loop so don't worry if you didn't get this like i'll show you dry run and uh, live demo also so let's look into the code when head is none or head dot next is none then we just return the head this is the base condition why base condition is required because if you don't provide a base or break condition in the recursive function the recursive function will continue indefinitely or until the system's maximum stack size is reached this leads to the stack out to error uh, so let's uh, so uh, as we see here uh, we are recursively calling after this like after this set so at what like let's take the example of one two three four and then uh, we get this recursively call until like head dot next is not none right uh, so then uh, like when head dot next is none that is when it reaches a four it just returns the head which is four so new head would be four here and then uh, if it is four then we know that the current head is three right uh, because uh, it is just written at, at 3 only we just send head dot next so head dot next is 4 so but 4 it returns head only so here current head is 3 and then what we are doing uh, since like we are head dot we know that head dot next is 4 and we are doing 4 dot next is equal to head which is 3 and then we are pointing head dot next is equal to none so we are breaking the loop uh, like pointer from 3 to 4 to avoid the loop and then we just at the end uh, we return the new head so don't worry if you don't get this I will just show the di live demo for this so just to give a context here I just uh, have defined the linked list node uh, which has this uh, value on the next and the next holds reference to the next node and then here we just define the solution class uh, which holds our solution uh, and then we just, I just uh, created link list 1 2 3 4 uh, so here I just initialized the solution class and then we just uh, in invoked our method to reverse list and then this returns our new head so I'm just iterating over this and printing so I'm just uh, I, I'm gonna just rerun this program. So it would give us 40 to one, which is the reverse link list. So I'll just run it step by step so that you will get an idea. Just go into this method. So here, as we already discussed, uh, when the head is none or head dot next is none, we just return the head. So let's see that in action. So here uh, we already see here we can see the variables value. Uh, here the head value is one and the heads next is also some have some value that's not none so we just process and then we recursively call same method so yeah now we are at the start of the method right now also we're checking for the condition if head is there and head dot next is there so here we can see that the head is there and head dot next is also there so we just go in and then we again call it similarly now also now what head is at 3 and head dot next is also uh, not none so we just process it right and then now the head is at 4 so here head is not none but head dot next is none right so we return the head so now we got the head now what like we let's see what is the head now so here the head value is 3 right so as we discussed now what we gonna do is we gonna set head dot next dot next is equal to head so which means that we are setting the head dot next like 4 which means that we are setting the force next is equals to 3 so let's see that in action so here what is head dot next 4 right so what is head dot next dot next it is none so here now we are setting the head dot next dot uh, next is equal to head right So, which means that we set four, uh, we make four to point to three, and we are making the head next to point to none. We, so it's just like we uh, we have to break the loop, right? 
else like it would be three would be pointing to four four would be pointing to three it's a circular loop so we have to break out break it else like we will keep on looping in that's why we set head dot next is equal to none so here we still see that head value is three but uh, next we just uh, return it what is our new head here right our new head is what four only so it just goes on uh, goes to the next stack and then we have it here similarly now what we have so this keeps on pro propagating new head that is four which comes from the last uh, like top iteration stack and is process rip so here we just doing the same thing head dot next dot next is equal to head so here we just keeping that what we are keeping is value we are making the 3 to point two two. that's all and then here we are making the 2 to point two one. and then we are just reversing uh, returning the solution here so let's go there um, and then yeah that's how we return like this i hope this gave you the clear idea of how to solve this problem using the recursion here the time complex is o of n because we iterate to all the nodes of the time complex right so it's o of n so space complex is o of n because here uh, it comes from the call stack each recursive call adds the frame to the call stack until the base condition is met since the recursion goes as deep as the number of nodes so here the number of nodes is n so the call stack will have n frames at its deepest leading to the o of n space complex 2 so demo and conclusion so here we have the two methods defined for the two different approaches so first let's try submitting the iterative approach we see here it's accepted solution so let's try submitting the recursive solution so yeah this also accepts the solution conclusion both iterative and recursive methods have their merits the iterative approach is space efficient while the recursive method offers a more elegant solution. Understanding both allows you to adapt based on the problem context and the personal preference. Remember, practice makes perfect. The implement both the methods and test them with a different link list to solidify your understanding. So, thank you for tuning in to this episode of If you found this video helpful, be sure to give the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more good tutorials and problem solving.